Genix Portal 5 is a major release of the software with more than 1000 new features. So let's get started with the new run panel. We now have, in all modeling categories in Genix Portals, model navigation right here in the run panel. For example, here I have 31 models in the run history, and I can browse them here and see the usage map changing, the model size changing, and the model fitting chart changing as I browse the models here. Also new in this new release is the full integration of logistic regression, and we now have here in the run panel and also in the results panel six different model fitting charts for model visualization. This same set of model fitting charts is also shown in classification both here in the run panel and also in the results panel. All these different model fitting charts are very useful because they show us different aspects of the model, like for example, the rounding threshold and the misclassifications clearly visible in these three different binomial fitting charts that we now have with different sortings. This other chart, the Hawk curve, is also very interesting and also very standard. There are other charts that show us different aspects of the distribution of classification outcomes, like this brand new classification scatter plot and the classification tapestry. In regression and time steps prediction, we also introduced new model fitting charts for model visualization both here in the RAM panel and also in the results panel. These different model fitting charts, they show different aspects of the models, like for example, the new scatter plot with its regression line and regression equation, the new residuals plot that allows a quick analysis of the residuals, and a brand new stack distribution chart that shows how well the model outputs are covering the target values. These model fitting charts are also available in the run panel in time series prediction. The stack distribution chart, the scatter plot, and the residuals plot. Let's now move on to the results panel and see some of the new features that we've introduced there. For example, for classification and logistic regression, we now have all those model fitting charts that we talked about when we introduced the new RAN panel. As you can see, they are all here. Also, we now have in the results panel a much more comprehensive set of measures of fit. For example, besides the usual classification accuracy and classification error, we now have other measures of fit like the Ari under the Hawk curve, the recall, the precision, the F1 measure the correlation coefficient and the dr square. Now we also show in the results panel the rounding thresholds of all the models in the run history, because now in version 5 we also have adaptive rounding thresholds for classification. For example this one here is the rock threshold. So if we browse the models here we can see not only the measures of fit changing, but also the rounding thresholds. Now, thanks to the introduction of all these new measures of fit and all these new model fitting charts, the process of model selection and analysis is much simpler in this new release. But we've improved and simplified this process even further in Genex Pro Tools 5 with the introduction of favorite statistics. Let's illustrate this with a simple example. Suppose you wanted to select your models by the ARIA under the Hawk curve. For that, we go to the history panel and set our favorite statistic to the ARIA under the Hawk curve. We now calculate the Hawk ARIA for the training and validation data sets. And now we sort our models by the Hawk ARIA. And now with yet another new feature introduced in version 5. We can re-index all our models so that they stay sorted by the Hawk ARIA. And now we go back to the results panel or to any other panel that supports model navigation 
and we are browsing our models by our favorite statistic. And as you can see, the rock area decreases as we go from one model to the next, ending with uh, the smallest value, which in this case is the first model that was created for this run. And uh, now, with yet another new feature introduced in version 5, we can get rid of any model that we don't want, like for example this one, just by pressing the delete active model icon and voila, it's gone. Another important use of Favorite Statistics is in the deployment of ensembles to Excel. As you can see, the Favorite Statistic is listed here in the table and you can use it to select the models for your ensemble. Favorite statistics are also used in regression and time search prediction. They are, of course, a different set and include the usual measures of fit that we commonly use in regression, like the mean square error, the mean absolute error, and the correlation coefficient. And now let me introduce some of the new features that we now have for data loading and uh, data manipulation. One of the biggest new additions to GenExpo Tools 5 is the full support for categorical variables and missing values, and also for data normalization. As you can see in this data set, we have variables that have been normalized, and uh, if we go to the original data, we see that we have categorical variables and numerical variables, and also some missing values in this data set. But in GenExpo Tools, we don't just replace the categorical values and the missing values by numbers. We go beyond that and we allow you to choose different mappings for all the categories in your variables. You write the mappings here and also for the missing values in all your variables. And uh, what's more important, these values, these choices that you made, are now part of the code. Indeed, GenExpo Tools creates code that handles all these transformations for you. This means, of course, that you don't have to pre-process your data every time you want to deploy your models. For example, in the sample code generated for this run, GenExpo Tools includes subroutines for handling the transformation of all categorical inputs and the standardization of numerical variables. They are here below and as you can see the categorical values and missing values are being mapped here for all the variables and uh, we have down here the subroutine for the standardization of numerical variables. Another big addition to GenExpo Tools 5 still in the data domain are the new algorithms for data management and subsampling. Now, in GenExpo Tools 5, you can split your data into training and validation datasets very easily. You can choose different sampling schemes like odds evens, taking partitions, and random sampling. This random sampling at this level here is done without replacement. However, GenExpo Tools also supports subsampling of the training and validation datasets, but this subsampling is done in the settings panel. So let's go there, take a look. As you can see, there are different subsampling schemes available both for the training and validation datasets. And as you can see, they include different random sampling schemes, both with replacement and without replacement. All these subsampling schemes can be used for different purposes. For example, in validation dataset, we can subsample just the odd cases and reserve the events for testing. In the training data, we can use, for example, the random subsampling and use it for bugging or we can use it for mini-batch processing. And now to finish, let me introduce you the new multifunctional data panel and some of the analysis that we can now perform here. First of all, in the new data panel, we now show all kinds of variables, the original variables, the derived variables, and the history models. 
and we also show different combinations of all these. This, of course, opens the door to a myriad of analysis that we can now perform in the new data panel. For example, we can look for outliers in our original variables with the help of this chart and standard deviation lines here shown in pink. And we browse the variables very easily. And here they are some outliers, and if we wished, we could um, remove them very easily. Another very interesting analysis that we can do now in the new data panel is the analysis of the importance of all the variables in our models. We choose model variables here, and um, in statistics charts, we choose the variable importance chart. And now, because we have model navigation tool here in the um, data panel, we can analyze the variable importance of all the models in the history very quickly. Another very interesting analysis that we can do is the analysis of the histograms of all the models in the history. We choose histograms here, and we can analyze the histograms of all the model outputs, and we can even synchronize the, the model shown here with the active model so that the statistics shown here in the statistics report complements the information that we are seeing here in the chart. Also, we can um, now, because uh, we show both the raw model outputs and the probability outputs and most likely class, we can also analyze the histograms of the probabilities which is, of course, another dimension to the, to the analysis of uh, our models. There's so much more new functionality left to explore here, like, for example, highlighting different kinds of records, like, for example, the misclassifications. And we can do this for all kinds of variables, like uh, the history models here, or the original variables. But there's yet another dimension to the new data panel that I would like to show you, and that's the records dimension. And we go there by choosing records here. We can also perform a wide range of analysis here on this side, like, for example, browsing all the records in our data sets with this powerful chart that compares each record with different record prototypes. But we can as easily do error analysis by choosing misclassifications here to browse. And now we are just browsing the errors that the model made. And we can do this for all the models in the run history. And uh, as you can see, most errors made by these models are legitimate ones. And there is not much that could be done to classify correctly these tumors at least not with his tests. This is just a little taste of the new features in GenX Pro Tools 5. So if you want more information, please take a look at the What's New page at the Shapesoft website. But more importantly, download the software and try it out. It's the Enterprise Edition and it's free for 15 days. And after that, it remains fully functional for the sample runs. And that's all. Thank you for listening. And above all, thank you for using GenX Pro Tools.